Hey everybody, this is Pete and today I'm doing a quick review of this remote control ornithopter that you can purchase from ornahobby.com. If you go there, you may find that their purchase buttons aren't working. It's just because they're a very small firm and they build every one of these custom orders. So your best bet is to just send them an email telling them what you want and they will send you an invoice. They will build it and a couple weeks later it'll be shipped out from Singapore to you. Like I said, everything is hand built. When the ornithopter comes to you, it comes to you in a little kit that you put together. I would say it's about 95% complete. You have to attach the wings, which are already built. You attach the tail, which is already built. You insert the wing spars into these slots. And just do a little bit of final assembly that's all detailed in this manual. If you do get it, I suggest asking them for the PDF version of this, which is colored and easier to see. The photos are clear. Now, when I received this, there were a couple of things that were confusing to me, the most confusing of which was how the tail is put together. When you get it, you have this carbon fiber plate and it goes underneath this carbon fiber plate and you use screws that they give you to hold the plate to this wingtip with a supplied reinforcing strip of like hardened sticky plastic underneath there. And then you use these elastic straps they give you to wrap it around and apply tension, which pulls it back and keeps the wing in tension. And that's pretty great. I have had a couple of issues and I have flown this and I will show you some videos. One of the issues is that this spar and that spar that connects these tail feathers to this main plate, the glue joint came undone. So what I did to address that was I cleaned up the glue joint and I added just a whole bunch of epoxy to hold it in place. That also stiffened up these tail feathers. And that's good because when you're flying, you wanna have some real rudder and elevator authority. That's how you steer, by turning this left or right or this whole thing up or down. Okay, now other things you might wanna know. When I received this, it came with a pinion gear. Let's see if I can find it it's around the table here. It came with this pinion gear. And that pinion gear is connected to the motor and it drives the main uh, gear. And that pinion gear's hole was just a little bit too big for the motor shaft. So what happened was as soon as I built up speed, the torque increased and the glue joint that they used to glue the pinion gear to this motor shaft came loose and it just spun freely. Now I tried Loctite and other kinds of threading compounds to hold it in place and it didn't work. And in the end, I said, heck with it. And I got online and I found a 48P 10 tooth pinion gear that has a set screw. And this made all the difference because I was able to slid off, slide off the original pinion gear and add this one right here to there. Obviously I ordered two, that's why I can do that. Um, and it works great. Now one of the things that's really nice about their design is that these two bolts right here can be loosened and you can adjust the spacing between the pin gear and that main gear. Now I use a technique that takes a small, a thin piece of printer paper, I create a, a strip of paper, fold it in half so it's two pieces of paper thick, and I run it between the pinion gear and this gear, okay? And then I tighten it up nice and tight, lock everything down, and then I take out the piece of paper, which leaves a tiny little bit of gap. Now I also use a little bit of synthetic lubricant on the gears that they recommend, and that seems to be working very well. As a matter of fact, when you, when you do this by hand, when you move the motor by hand, you can actually get those wings to move very, very easily on their own. And that's a sign of a, if I had two hands, it'd be easier. But you can see that spins really easily. It's very smooth gear workings. Okay, so how does it fly? Well, when I got it, I put the center of gravity where they recommended in the instructions. And it just didn't really want to climb. I mean, I could fly it, but it didn't climb. So I end up moving the battery back about an inch. So you can see the mark that I added up there. I just went about an inch back. And I'm still tweaking with it. I've only had about five flights on this, but I haven't had any crashes or anything like that. Even when the pinion gear let loose, it was I was able to control it. Um, it glides. You know, these things don't glide really, but it does have these glide lock arms. These glide lock arms 
which are these different colored 3D printed arms, they're gravity fed. They slip down, gravity pulls them down, and they hit these little notches, which makes your wing get locked in a glide mode. So you can control it a little bit when you stop flapping your wings. Now, when I got this, by the way, these were too tight. They weren't, they, they wouldn't move. And you want them to freely move so that every time the gear spins around, they flip up on this little notch that's in there so that they lock in place if it uh, is going to go backwards at all, which happens when you go into glide lock. Okay, so that's how that works. Now I've got some video showing you. Um, in the video, I use a thousand milliamp hour battery to sell. That's really all you need to be able to fly this. And I have been flying Sean Kincaid models for many, many years. Now this design is clearly, you know, take a lot, it takes a lot of inspiration. I suppose that's me being kind from the Sean Kincaid models. And I always place all my electronics on this side and my battery on the other side. So I know you want to see the video of it flying. So just hang tight and I will cut that into the video now. That's flying awful low. I'm having to pull back on the tail completely to keep it up. And I've got full up elevator. The only way to make it fly higher is to make the wings flap faster. Hmm. So I might need to adjust the center of gravity to put it back even further. Hmm. If I was smart, I would land it right now and do that. It's gotten too low and a lot of cutoff is happening. Hmm. But it's not a good thing because then I won't be able to control the land well. Do you have an uh, idea of how long it'll do, last? Do you feel how the wings, do you, can you tell the wings are slowing down? Yeah, a little bit. Did you slow them down or? No. No, that's the battery dying. Oh, it doesn't last very long then. No, I have a very small battery in there. I, I want it to go as light as possible. Mm. All right, I'm going to bring it in. Oh, point, pointing in the wrong direction. 